The following documents and recordings are the eighth instalment in a compilation detailing the events of Graeme Kasner's return to Svalbard, following the occurrences of Outpost Freestead and Base Camp Piedra. Mr. Kasner was accompanied by fellow specialist Dracana Vukovic, archaeology professor Dr. Josefa Guerrero, and oceanographer Dr. Amelia Murray. Dr. Murray remained in the Alison while the others continued to the outpost. In the summer months, Arctic cyclones are the foremost type of hazardous weather present in areas across the northern Atlantic, northern Pacific, and North Seas. Capable of developing tumultuous sea conditions, impacting sea ice, dropping heavy precipitation, and resulting in avalanches, these Arctic cyclones can severely impact the lives of local populations. During these storms, travel is not advised. The White Vault Following the previous section of my personal recording, my mother left the Swedish cave site's entrance to make calls regarding the new interloper, Dr. Amelia Murray. During her absence, I sat down with Vidar Henriksen, one of the site preservation specialists, to further discuss my new burdens and the normal operations of the family. This first section comes from my continued recording of events and conversations held in the Swedish site. Would you like to see more of that, Sage? There is still much to be seen. I mean, it's uh, rather extensive. Not right now, thank you. I have a lot on my mind. I'd prefer to sit and think. I told a man who trusted me a lie that we'll get him killed. I chose to do that, and... I don't know if it was the right thing to do. Are you asking for my opinion? No. Is everything she told me true? Does this save people? Not an opinion? The truth. It is true for me. We do this. We feed the vaults and help the Foraminder to protect the future. Both those of the many and our own. If all of it is not true, I would not be able to tell you. But I have studied the proof and examined these places. I have encountered the Forminder and the lights. And so for me, it is an absolute. <sighs> so what can I do? There are always some... Not an open question. If I cannot help Kasna, I can help the others. There are people in the Alasan who are suffering through this without knowledge or reason. Vidar, give me the satellite phone. Here. But if you are open to any opinions, consider consulting your mother before taking further actions. Because that is how it is done. Because a cohesive front is stronger. Her experience has worth. More tea? Yes, please. <laughs> I'm on hold with Longyear BN Transportation Services. What's your plan? Are you interested? I am, and so are they. You have assembled a growing audience. <laughs> Are they the same? I don't understand the question. The statues and the guardians, I mean. Are they one and the same? Yes, of course. I'm, I'm sorry, I did not think you thought differently. They are the same. Still on hold? What is your plan? Yes, with many callers ahead of me. I'll hire on any possible boats and medical crews, leave them on reserve, and as soon as they're able, they head out to New Allison. You have been doing a lot recently. 
Someone must. But I typically have people to help me. Why not have them call? Our system works in a similar way. More similar than you most likely thought. It is not your mother who makes the day-to-day calls required to fix these events. After what I just did, Vidar, I need to feel capable of doing something good. Now, mm, explain more. Please. About the Forminder. Well, Forminder are guardians of the vaults. They have been with the sites for all of known time and beyond. Each cycle a new Forminder can be formed, sometimes more than one. They can be animals or people when they are chosen, and their emerging form is influenced by their original anatomy. But the end result still thinks and acts like a Forminder. There was a man, Hulda's husband, Jonas. Is that what happened to him? Yes. Some devout followers, <laughs> not of the family, choose to give themselves to the sites in hopes of being selected for the transformation. Jonas didn't want what happens to him. He wanted to go home. He wanted to see his daughters again. Yeah. At other times, the choice is by chance or devious design. And, and, and so it is not a choice, at least not for the chosen. It is a terrible process. When the devout become deranged enough to wish for it, they, they sometimes see it as the only way to get closer to the forces of the vaults. Without the protection of the line of mothers, though, they, they can lose everything. For some, their minds are so far lost they can be a blessing for the Forminder to emerge. Are they dead? The people who become those things? Yes. Memories remain, we believe, but the person is gone. As I said earlier, the same process can happen to animals. And in every case it becomes a Forminder version of the creature. Larger, slick-skinned like oil... The sea creatures are the worst for me. They are the most upsetting. And the statues? We are still studying this state, but each is the Forminder. The statues do not move unless they want to, and they can switch between the states instantly and without any impact on their surroundings, visual, audible, or otherwise, and they do not like to be looked at. Are you still on hold? Mm Mm-hmm. With whom? Longyearbyen Transportation Services. Vidar? Why hang up? So we can speak. We will help, but we have to do it our way. With no paper trail, no names, and no way of tracing anything back to Velsina, Sidja, or you. You are no longer your father's daughter. Not his alone. You are mine. You are of the family and of Velsina. Hiding is doing nothing. No. Hiding and helping is all the better. Why do they need to know it is us, that it is you, to make you feel better? While I agree things can always be changed for the better, some things we have mastered. Families will receive compensation and counselling through a professional non-profit we fund. Companies and universities will have no issues with insurance claims for their property. Research stations will overflow with new grants from companies across the world. Volunteer medical staff will receive large anonymous donations to make rescue and recovery operations possible. And we will remain unseen. Everything you wish to do we have already prepared for. But in the end, the dead are already gone. This is the truth. You have thought more about how to control the fallout and fixing the problem. So far, we have a lot to learn. And your calls? What about this Dr. Amelia Murray? My team is working on it. If she makes it out of Svalbard alive, we can begin to worry. Might I get some of that tea, Vida? Yes, of course. 
As we were discussing possible developments due to Dr. Amelia Murray's involvement, events were unfolding simultaneously for Dr. Murray in the weather station in Nialison. Following the previous recording, Dr. Murray rejoined the majority of the survivors in the weather station's living area. This recording comes from Dr. Murray's body camera about an hour following her previous file. I'm sorry, Lisa, what? Cross is at the radio. There was a noise. I heard it too. I'll, I'll go get Carter. Everyone stay here and stay quiet. Paul. Paul, are you awake? Shh. There's something. During your ten hour drunk stupor, Paul. She's gone! She? If I had to guess based on the build. No! It's that thing. Is it out there? There was something. Stay low. Turn off the lights. Check the windows for anything. withstand spellbound storms and polar bears. We should be fine. No, we won't be. Just stay calm. I'll go check the door. I'm coming with you. Lori, stay here with Lisa and Paul. Make sure your guns are loaded. Josefa, is there anything you want to tell us? A phrase? She's not. She's just looking at something. Me. She's watching me. She's following me. When I move, she's following me. Amelia, don't taunt it. I'm going down the hall to keep an eye on her. What happened? Outside the window. I don't understand. What's happening? Who is that? Just stay down. It's her. It's that woman. She's dead. She's dead. And the others will die here too. No one was going to make it through that. We never should have let them leave. There are two of them. Or more. No. Is Lisa right though? Only the dead come back like this, right? And if Yosefa has gone, the others might be too. We don't know. We don't know how any of this works. If the other woman... Dragana. Yes, I know. If Dragana is gone, no one here can fly the helicopter. We'll be stuck until more help arrives. If it ever does. I never reached anyone on the radio. Ah! What is that, 
It's knocking. And it looks like some window. It could easily break the window. We've seen what these things have done across the Amazon. Why? Why rely on them? We didn't know them. They're dead. We'll need a new way out of this. What did you say, Amelia? They aren't using brute force. They could break in if they wanted. This is a well-built station, but I've seen the tracks and the damage. So have you. They're choosing to be non-violent, at least for now. So they are waiting for something? Or they want something. Her. It looks at her. It only looks at her. It wants her. Walk. Walk by the window. Do it. That is absurd. No, it's not. Walk by the window. Is it looking for anyone, or just you? Amelia, this is... No, I want to know. It is me you're looking at. We don't give people to monsters. That's not what Paul is saying. But we were safer before Amelia arrived. Before our whole team showed up on the roof. It might have attracted attention enough that they called her to send us something. Don't put words in my mouth. Maybe that's what I am saying. We get her out there. Maybe we have to. We don't know how this works. We don't even know what those things are. It will take us all. If it takes her first, it doesn't matter. What? No. Carter, it's okay. I wasn't here before. They've all been through a lot. You can't stop anyone from leaving, and I choose to go. They are looking at me. Paul is right. If I go, maybe they'll leave you alone. Let her go. Paul's never right. All he's done since we've gotten here is drink, sleep, and complain. Better than prancing around, worrying about nothing. Shut the hell up, Paul. I'm going. That's my choice. And just because Yosefa is dead, it doesn't mean the others are. She was a little... lost. But Jogano and Graham, I believe they can make it back. We haven't seen them, just Yosefa. There's a chance. There are ways out of this. They won't hurt me. What do you plan to do? You're not walking into the tropics out there. I'll head to the shore, and look for signs of the storm clearing. If I can find them, I'll check the emergency dock lights. I might just come back if there's nothing else. This is the stupidest shit. At least take a shotgun. You can't give her that. We here need all the protection we can get. Shut up, Paul. If the thing ever comes in here, odds are you'll be unconscious on the floor. So I don't think you'll need it. <laughs> and this... If the storm clears up, or the pilot makes it back, we'll need to heat up and fly out of here. We have extra flare guns, so if you see one, you'll know. Of course. Thank you. There are medical supplies on the helicopter. I never delivered them due to... due to the conditions. But if you make it, they'll be there. Are you really dumb enough to do this? They kill you. No. I don't think they will. Close the hands behind you. Just remember that if we see you come back, you won't think it's you. I know. Good luck. This shit. Don't die out there. We'll just stay. Thank you. Are you ready? Are you? Yes. Let's go. You're either about to die, or you know something you haven't told me. I don't generally share all my secrets with people I've just met. Not even in life-threatening situations? I've seen these things before. I've seen what they can do to good people. Don't try to find out what they are, Carter. Just live through this, and don't look for answers. That's your advice? That's my warning. All right. I'm ready. Good luck.
At this point during Dr. Murray's body camera recording, there were no further words spoken for some time. As she exited the hatch on the roof of the weather station, she entered into the dense and brightly white storm outside. After descending the ladder from the roof to the external walkway, she was approached on either side by Dr. Josefa Guerrero, or those things masquerading as Dr. Guerrero. They did not speak, nor move too close to Dr. Murray. Dr. Murray began to slowly descend the steps to the ground, and began a heading toward the main road, in the direction of the shore and primary docks. At several points during the walk, when Dr. Murray turned to look for the figures of Dr. Guerrero walking beside her, they were many meters away and partially shrouded in white. They stopped walking when she stopped, but they always faced the same direction. At one point in the recording, Dr. Murray stumbles. She then bent down to examine what caused the dip in the road. The rocky street was tracked with massive footprints, larger than the size of any polar bear and with a thick, inward-jutting thumb. Without appropriate tools, Dr. Murray compared the print to the length of her shotgun, to which the footprint fell only slightly short. While unable to correctly identify the type of shotgun Dr. Murray was given, the average length of a hunting shotgun is approximately 120 centimeters. When compared to the footprint, the print appeared to be 5 6 of the length of the shotgun. Polar bears have large feet for their body size, with their paws reaching approximately 30 centimeters in width. If the approximate measurement of the footprint is compared to the body shape of the polar bear, which comes in at approximately 1.3 meters when standing on all four paws, it is possible that the size of the animal that left the footprints was 4.3 meters tall. If this number is within the realm of possibility, it could be supported by the evidence of roofs across Nialison having been torn upward, in addition to those that were smashed in. Dr. Murray's hands are visually shaking in the recording. It is unknown whether or not she realized that the poor prints were heading in the opposite direction of her goal, and in fact, that the prints led in the direction taken by Mr. Kasner, Ms. Vikovic, and Dr. Guerrero. When Dr. Murray resumed walking toward the shore, she was no longer accompanied by the forms of Dr. Guerrero. She stopped for a moment, indicated by the lack of audible footsteps, but all that was visible for several minutes was the rushing bright white of the storm. As she waited, a tall black form faded into view, solidifying through the white. The oily leather skin, gleaming like that of an orca whale, came into clear view as the lanky, stretched humanoid figure approached her. As the body camera was mounted to Dr. Murray's chest, the camera never captured its face, but it did catch a glimpse of the rudimentary string and tied object around its neck, the same necklace made for Jonas Thorison by his daughters. During the previous compilation for Mr. Kasner and Ms. Vukovic, they discovered a new chamber in the caves beneath Svalbard's anatomical theatre. This chamber contained the collected possessions of vault and guardian victims going back hundreds if not thousands of years. Following this discovery, Ms. Vukovic found an SD card in Walter Heath's old jacket pocket. This recording is a continuation from Ms. Vukovic's body camera. SD card from Heath. Let me see. I can play this if you want me to. Heath had a lot of tech. That thing could have hours of useless files. We don't have time for that. When's the last time you used the camera yourself? The files have dates, Graham. Then look. Does that thing record? No. Yes, the recording quality is shit, but it's small and portable, so after everything that happened with the recordings in Patagonia and the files from your time here, I brought this for watching, not recording. You're right, though. Lots of files from before Svalbard. A woman in England somewhere. Same woman, different part of England now, London. Woman with a cat in a flat. Cat. The date is getting closer. More of that cat. A train ride. Here, this is our post free set. Graham? Hit play. 
The following is the audio of the relevant file from the SD card. In the video, the original Outpost Freestead repair team consisting of Dr. Rosa Della Torre, Walter Heath, Graham Kasner, Dr. Corina Schumacher Weiss, and Jonas Thorison are seated around the small table inside the Outpost Freestead kitchen and living area. They are drinking coffee and the outpost appears as it had during the first few days during the team's arrival. All right, Yola, tell us a bit about Iceland. Iceland? Uh, it's beautiful. Everyone is polite. At least that's always been my experience. During winter it's obviously very cold and some of the roads get shut down from time to time, but it's my favorite time of the year. It's The northern lights come out in power and... and you're a tourist. My daughters love the sled. I've only ever been during the winter, and that sounds exactly as I would describe it. And you, Kasna, ever been? Yes. All right, then. I could see it. Graham in a hand-knit sweater chasing sheep with the beard you blend right in. Did you enjoy it, though, Iceland? I did. More coffee? Oh, oh yes, please. Me too. Of course. Is this as dark as it comes? No, sorry. This one just came out a bit weaker than I would have liked. I think we'd all prefer it a bit stronger next time. I'll cook up the next round when we're ready. Why did you go to Iceland? Work. Well, if we leave it up to Kasna, we'll never change the subject because we just sit here in silence until the weather clears up. So, what about Germany, Karina? Yes, what about Germany, Walter? It exists. <laughs> great people, mostly great weather, outstanding beer. Personal opinion, or just what everyone says about Germany? <laughs> Both. I don't know about that weather part. It depends on what you enjoy. And what part of the country you're in, of course. Some of us are very accustomed to the rain. But what I wanted to ask you was... How is travelling from Germany? It's centrally located, so I'm assuming you can get just about anywhere. Uh, oh, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, not an attribute I can apply to Iceland. Getting anywhere, even without a car, is not too difficult. I've been to Italy, Austria, Switzerland, Poland and more when I had, like, a long weekend. I've never been to France, though, even though there are direct neighbours, but I would rather die than go there. <laughs> if you have a little bit more time on your hands, you can even go to Hungary or Croatia. There's very little out of reach for us, and I enjoy long train rides. I find them very relaxing. That I agree with. Sit down, enjoy some tea and Wi-Fi, and let the world pass by. I really enjoy reading some books or just watching the scenery, you know? Just disconnecting. To each their own? I don't think I remember Iceland having a train. Sadly, we do not. A pity, I think. Sometimes... I would like to enjoy the landscape, but I'm usually the driver, and my daughters can be quite distracting. Do they enjoy it in Iceland? <laughs> yes, of course. Who does it? But it is all they've ever known. Well, we have gone on holidays to other places, but living their life, going to school, their friends, it's all there. Do you have children? Me? No. <laughs> Never settled down long enough for that. What was that? The battery? Ah, no, the card is running out of space. I've been using this one for a while. I just wanted to fill it up. I'll be right back. I've brought others. The recording ended there. Nothing abnormal happened in the video's visuals, and it appears to have been an ordinary clip from a short period of time. The following comes from Ms. Vukovic's body camera and begins directly following the end of their viewing of Mr. Heath's recording. Still not a man of many words. Sounded like Rosa was trying to start a conversation with a brick wall. They seemed nice. With this recording, everything we can see and the smell of decay, this has been happening for far too long. Imagine being a Viking for a moment, okay? And sailing up to the coast of Svalbard only to have ended up taken, heart in a box, teeth too, all the teeth. That alone shows how long this has been going on. But this room, this is people. 
This is people. Their bad fashion choices, their broken equipment, the swords and weapons they thought would protect them, all the way up to you and your team. Sitting around that table, we were right to come. I know we lost Yosefa. And I know we may not make it out of here. But it was the right thing to do. And if you're trying to be some kind of hero, I get it. I can stop it. At least this time. I can stop it. This concludes the eight set of documents and recordings from the team's return to Svalbard, a complete this section detailing Dr. Murray's choice to leave the weather station, and Mr. Kasner and Ms. Vukovic's discovery from the past team and victims. The White Vault. 